Okay, so in this video, we're going to introduce the idea of a parametric surface. Um, so it's very similar to the idea of a parametric curve, except that we want to create an object which is two-dimensional. So that means that rather than starting with r as, say, a function of t to generate a curve, um, r is going to be a function from some domain d in r2, and it's going to take values in R3. So what we're going to have is something which looks like R of uv is x of uv, y of uv, z of uv. Okay. Um, if you uh, if your u's and v's look too similar in your handwriting, maybe you want to use s and t for your parameters. That's fine too. Uh, I'm not sure why we're. I don't know. For some reason, I feel like u and v should be the default. Um, you might have some other preference. So the idea is, you got this sort of scenario here. Okay. So r is your mapping. Okay going from R2 to R3, so this is with coordinates u and v, this is with coordinates x, y, and z, right? And the idea is that you've got some, some domain d over here, and that domain d is going to get transformed by this mapping into some region in three-dimensional space, right? So some three-dimensional surface, right? And so any point uv in your domain will correspond to some point x, y, z on the surface, right? If we draw in, you know, lines of constant v or lines of constant u, Right? Um, those are going to correspond to curves on the surfaces, right? If we, hold one of the, if we hold one of the two variables constant, then what we would have is a parametric curve. Um, so we can, we can work that out, right? So we have curves going over like that, let's say. Going that way, and you might have another set of curves maybe going along in this direction here, right? With similar ones through the back, something like that, right? So basically, the, the kind of the standard grid system that you have, the standard Cartesian grid system that you have in the UV plane generates a grid system over here on your surface in XYZ space, right? Um, and, and so the basic idea is because you have this function, you have this function r, and, you know, as usual, uh, what should we expect this function to satisfy, right? Um, we should expect it to be at least c1, right? It should be continuously differentiable. Uh, it should probably be uh, 1 to 1. Uh, again, maybe, maybe there are some things you relax along the boundary, right? You might want to have something where you actually identify where maybe two sides of the boundary map to the same point because you want to, maybe you want to parameterize a sphere or a cylinder, right? And so you might want to be able to wrap things around so they join up. So you might, you might relax that. So maybe one to one at least on the interior. Um, right. So, and, and we'll look, there's going to be some more conditions to come, but that's kind of, you know, initially what we could state. Right. And so the idea is that if you have a, a smooth one-to-one -one mapping like this, then every point on the surface corresponds to a point on D, right? And any kind of piece of the surface corresponds to, you know, a little piece over here of D. And so if you want to do cal calculus on the surface, you want to do, let's say, integrals, for example, um, then rather than doing integration over here, Maybe we should do integration over here, right? So we'll use, we'll use this function r to take any problem that we want to solve over here on our surface and turn it into a problem that we can solve over here um, in, in 
the UV plane in R2 where we understand things fairly well, right? Um, so that's the basic idea. Uh, for a couple of kind of quick examples, um, let's do a few examples. Uh, so I could do something like a sphere of radius r. Let's say I want to parameterize a sphere. Well, we, we know that there is a natural kind of coordinate grid on the sphere coming from spherical coordinate systems, right? So maybe we should take, rather than u and v, maybe we take phi and theta, right? And so the thing that's going to be different compared to spherical coordinates is I only want the surface of the sphere. So I'm fixing the radius, right? Rho is fixed at a particular value, right? And then I'm going to have cos, oops, sorry, sine. Well, it's, I can save it. Cos theta sine phi r sine theta sine phi r cos phi, right? Um, I could do, and, and, and of course here I should say that uh, we want uh, theta to be between 0 and 2 pi. We want phi to be between 0 and pi, right? Um, so it's kind of interesting actually to think about what happens with that transformation. So, so one of the things you might want to do is think about what is actually happening to that rectangle. Right. Um, I'll leave this as, as kind of a, a visualization exercise for you. I think it's a good one to do. Um, draw that rectangle in the phi theta plane. Um, think about, you know, okay, so some edges are going to get joined. Some edges are actually going to get shrunk down to a point, right? Um, try, to, try to visualize what's going on with that, with that mapping. Um, see if you can picture it, right? Um, similarly, we might do, say, a, a cylinder. Right. If we had, uh, yeah, cylinder. Let's say with radius r, height h, then we might do something like r of u v is equal to. Let's see. I guess we'd want to do r cos u r sine u, and then simply v, right? Where u is between 0 and 2 pi, and v goes between, uh, let's say, 0 to h, right? Um, that might give us a parameterization for a, for a cylinder. Um, you could also do planes, for example, uh, if you had a Let's actually do this is not a bad example. Let's say you have a plane sitting in space, and then we'll move on to some more general ideas. Okay, so somewhere in space, you've got that plane sitting there, and it's got some equation, right? It's got an equation like uh, 3x plus 2y minus z equals 4. Um, and you want to think, okay, how do I actually, how do I parameterize this thing? Well, we might, we might think of this, there's a few ways to do it. Um, the sort of standard way you might do this is to choose two of these to be parameters. Maybe I choose um, x and y to be parameters, and I think about, okay, so a general vector x, y, z, if I solve for z, I could do x, y, and then 3x plus 2y minus 4. And so I could think of this as there's this vector 0, 0, minus 4 plus x times 1, 0, 3, and y times 0, 1, 2, right? Um, so kind of standard linear algebra. So what you're, what you're doing here is you're saying, okay, well, somewhere... Um, somewhere on my plane, I have this initial point. I guess it should have been down there. You got that initial point on the plane. That's this one. And then at that point, you've got a couple of vectors which lie in the plane, say, uh, say a V and a W. So that would be like your V. That's like your W, right? Um, 
And then X and Y in this case become your parameters, or maybe you want to call them S and T or U and V, however you want to think about it. Um, so that would give you a, a parametric description for a plane sitting in space as well, right? Um, you can you could sort that out. Um, okay, uh, I think we'll pause here. We're going to come back and we're going to look at a few more details. Um, we're going to look at tangent vectors, normal vectors. We're going to eventually get to area.